Hello and welcome to my tech fan. In this video I'm testing a laser engraver and this is Vainlux K8. And for the first time on this channel, this is the fully enclosed laser engraver. Usually I'm talking about the safety at the beginning of this kind of videos with those DIY laser engravers. And one of the first thing I always mention that uh, you should wear those uh, safety glasses. And actually everybody in that room should wear this safety equipment. But here it is not necessary because it is enclosed. We have that protection glass on the doors. And even if you open the door, it should uh, pose the engraving. Of course, uh, other safety things you should care about. Uh, for example, those fumes, if you use it regularly. I like those fumes to exhaust outside of the flat, but in separate box I got this air purifier. Uh, we will see how it performs. It has some filters inside. Because of this enclosed area, it has some limitation. The working area is 130 millimeters in X and Y direction. Of course, the object which can be inserted is a little bit bigger than this. Uh, this version is equipped with 10 watt uh, diode laser. This is the real optical power. And the maximum speed is 15,000 millimeters per minute. Interesting feature is that it has a camera inside and it can be used for the positioning of the designs on the objects inside. And according to specifications, the lifetime of the laser is 10,000 hours. And the price is quite low for this kind of equipment. The 10 watt version costs approximately $400. This is the US price, I think. It is uh, fully assembled, but uh, let's unbox it and then we can start the testing. Well, these boxes are much nicer, but let's continue the unboxing. The packaging is good in both cases, even on this purifier. And inside the engraver, we have some additional tools and boxes. Well, this was content of the package. So we have the main unit and a lot of sample materials from some black acrylic, uh, some cardboards, uh, plywood, even some metal sheets. This is the power adapter. The output is 12 volts and 5 amperes. User manual and then we have some tools and a spare lens. And in a separate box it was this air purifier with power adapter. The output is 12 volts and 2 amperes. User manual and then we have this pipe. The length is approximately 60 centimeters and it is not long enough to exhaust the air I know outside but it is long enough to connect these two boxes. Let's take a closer look of this unit. First I will remove this foil. Mm, much better now. This is the front side of the engraver and we can open the door until this angle. Down we have the dust box for the cleaning. Here we have the power button and this is the repeat button to repeat the last job. And with this we can adjust the height of the working desk. Connection for the air purifier. And this is the back side and I noticed that this door can be also opened until this angle. And here we have the connection for the power and the USB Type-C plug. Interesting solution on the back side from inside we have the slot for the SD card. Inside we can see the laser module and this arm is for setting the focus so I can lift the work area until this limiter touch the top of the surface and then I can lift it up. And I can feel that in upper position it is holded by some magnet so it will not fall down during the shaking. It really looks great and it's pretty that I'm limited with this smaller engraving area. I get used to those big DIY laser engravers. But let's give it a power, connect to the laptop and let's test it. These are the test materials which are included in the kit, I already mentioned them. But instead of those, I have my regular materials which I'm always using in this kind of videos, so the results are comparable with each other. The 3mm thick plywood and MDF wood, stainless steel, 3mm thick uh, black acrylic and some anodized aluminum. And here I face the first problem because of the size. This MDF wood, which I'm always uh, using in this kind of videos, uh, cannot fit inside this uh, working area. So I cut a small piece of it, so this will be used in the testing. Uh, before I start, one more thing I want to mention. We have this uh, some kind of limiter. It has some pins and magnets. And we can use it for two things. One, to have the squareness, a 90 degree angle of the object, if we use it as a limiter. Or, for example, in mass production, we can always place some smaller parts in exactly the same position and just uh, press the repeat button and we have the same engraving on the same position. But in my case I don't need it. Let's prepare the focus. 
and now the focus is set on the top of this surface. From software, I will try even three applications. The first one is the laser JBL, which is completely free, but available only for Windows, and it is very popular. And also I will try the Liburn, which is available on Macintosh, on Linux, and similar. Not completely free, but it is also very popular between the advanced users. And also they have their own software, which is also free. It calls uh, CatLab X. And uh, I think it's somewhere between the laser GABL and the uh, Liburn. And unfortunately, if you want to use the advantages of this uh, engraver, for example, to use the camera, we have to use uh, this software. Back to laser GABL, the common baud ports are already recognized, and I already installed earlier the CS340 driver. And let's establish the connection. And always just quickly trying to move the module, and it is working. Ready for the engraving. This is my first test engraving, 3000 mm per minute speed, M4 and uh, full power. And this is the size, create, boundary check. And if the position is not correct, I can move it by hand, but also I can use the arrows inside the laser GBL. But in that case, I have to click on this button to set that this is the new origin. And here I can do again the boundary check. And this is real time speed because this is quite short engraving. Okay, let's see it. Ah, I forgot to enable this. It's not too loud. It is louder than the laser engraver itself, but well, I would say it's quiet. Now let's analyze this. Looks like I still remember the settings for the 10 watt diet laser because this is my first attempt. Uh, but I can see a little bit more waves here on the top and on the bottom. Uh, maybe it has a little bit more vibrations than uh, I would like to see on this engraving. <laughs> I think I have to take a closer look uh, because this is wobbling. Something I have to tighten here. Oh yes, it used the Vistot wheels and I forgot to set the aesthetic nuts. If this is printed for beginners, and it could be, but definitely they should use some kind of linear rails or something like that, because uh, beginner users don't like these uh, eccentric nuts. I can see them on the y-axis, and I currently I'm not sure, but I think something similar we have on the x-axis too. Hmm. And look at this, open end wrench is not even included in the package, so I have to use my own. Here you can see the x-axis, but it looks like it is uh, tight in x-direction, only those two eccentric nuts I have to tight. But off camera, just showing you. Ah, and I need a small open end wrench. And now it doesn't bubble at all. Now let's repeat the same engraving. Boundary check, it will be next to it. And using the same settings. I was waiting half minutes for the smoke to be exhaust. Oh yes, definitely. After tightening the wheels, the right side is much sharper now. Interesting thing I noticed, and it is great for safety. If I open the door, I cannot start the engraving or I cannot even move the head or start the boundary check and if I close the door again I can do those operations now. I'm still in laser JBL. let's engrave some grayscale image, this is Padme from the Star Wars and I'm using here 15,000 mm per minute speed and 90% power. Ok, this is a little bit confusing and I had the same problem with the experimenting. It starts with the engraving and then it doesn't finish for some reason. And the same problem I had here. Let's switch the software. This is CutLab X. And I opened the same grayscale image. And I will try to use the same settings. So the grayscale image and 50,000 mm per minute speed and 95% we will see and the internal 0.1 mm. This is the preview of the image. The position is OK. Now I will start the engraving and starting the time lapse. Oops, <laughs> it stopped after 1%. But well, let's try something much smaller, again that uh, test image, I. The preview position is OK, and let's start. It slows down and then it stops, this time at 13%. Just to be sure, I will try a different cable too. With new cable, very small grayscale image engraving. 
preview to check the position. It's OK. Start. Hmm. And this time it's finished, so let's try some bigger engraving. Let's see if it will be finished this time, and I will start the time lapse here. And this time it will be finished. On last few lines, interesting, it doesn't have any engraving, but uh, it still goes with the head. It looks a little bit light, but at least it is finished completely. And um, I will try now again from the laser GABL. I just want to be sure that the problem was in the cable. And the same engraving, this time from the laser GLBL, the boundary check is OK. And uh, let's start with engraving at 15,000 millimeters per minute. And I will start the time lapse video. Engraving was finished in four minutes. Actually, it was faster and it didn't use all those empty lines. So it stopped immediately when it finished the engraving. Just to be sure that it was the problem with the cable, I repeated this engraving several times and this one also will be finished soon. And since I replaced the new cable, I don't have a problem anymore. Now just a few notes about the software. I can see it is very new and uh, there are a lot of space for improvements. For example, if I want to open an image, it doesn't remember my last folder. It always starts with some root directory and I have to search. And then even if I start a new work, if I accidentally click on X, it will immediately close the window. It should ask if I want to save or something like that. And it doesn't have the undo function. And finally I switched to the line burn and I created manually this uh, Vainlux uh, K8 profile. The most important is that this is a GRBL version and the 130 by 130 millimeters is the working area. And I will start with this engraving test. from 1000 to 6000 mm per minute speed, 60 and 100% power, and actually this one looks the best, uh, 4000 mm per minute and 100% power. But it's time to do some cutting. I'm starting the cutting, this one is on 100 mm per minute speed, quite slow, and I worry about it because it doesn't have the air assist, and I'm just following it uh, to avoid catching the flame, but it will be finished correctly. This is the back side. Semi-metric plywood, 300 mm per minute is the biggest speed I could cut. And if I watch the other side, I can see it is almost cut on 400 mm per minute speed too. And we can see that uh, there is a difference in the strength in along the X and the uh, Y direction. Unfortunately, we don't have an air assist here because uh, the cutting would be much nicer, but it is also safer, especially on the lower speeds. And now let's try to cut this 3mm thick MDF wood, which is very hard for cutting for these 5 and 10 watt diodizers. So this is why we need an air assist with these lower speeds. But I will not stop it yet. Okay, this is 200mm per minute speed. And I could see two times that it catched the flame, but even on this lower speed, it was not cut. On 200 millimeters per minute, it was almost cut in, uh, I think this is the Y direction, but in X direction, no. So if you want to cut this type of the wood, we need uh, two or three passes. 200 millimeters per minute speed, and I will try two passes. So cutting MDF, uh, 200 mm per minute speed, full power with two passes. And usually I have the same settings for this uh, same millimeter black acrylic, only it will be very hard to see the laser spot during the framing. 200 mm per minute speed, full power, two passes. Only the position is approximately because uh, I cannot see the laser spot uh, through the glass during the framing. So this hole was cut out now and I have very nice sharp edges on both parts and uh, usually I have the same settings like with the MDF wood. And now I'm engraving anodized aluminum. I really like to use it because it doesn't smoke, no flames and similar and it is not so sensitive to settings neither and I will just do here a few engravings. Setting the new focus 
And for this, actually, I don't need this air purifier. Real nice engraving, 2000, 4000 and 6000 millimeters per minute speed and they look very equally. So this is what I mentioned that the anodized aluminum is not so sensitive to the settings. And now engraving stainless steel. First few lines are engraved with this uh, 5 and 10 by diet lasers with 100 millimeters per minute speed and I should get something similar. I can feel the engraving and the result is very similar like with the other Temba dyed lasers. <laughs> and I have to clean this glass, this is why I couldn't see through it normally. And now quickly the conclusions for the end. Well, the idea is great. Fully enclosed, a very safe laser engraver, great for the beginners. But uh, first of all, you must be sure that this engraving size is enough for you, 130 millimeters along the X and Y. And also you have to choose the power. The 10 watt is the biggest uh, here. For my taste, it's a little bit weak because I get used to those uh, stronger DIY big uh, laser engravers. You saw a few tests on this channel. Now what I'm really missing here is that uh, air assist. With this, uh, the cutting would be much cleaner, but also safer. You saw sometimes uh, on 100 millimeters per minute speed, I could see some flames and this wouldn't be visible if I would have an air assist here. Great idea is that we can buy an air purifier, so you can use it in a flat. I could feel a little bit that smell, but not even close when I use those uh, DIY engravers without any enclosure or something like that. Now, if this is for the beginners, I don't really like that they use those uh, rubber wheels and uh, it's not even mentioned in user manual, we don't even have an open-end branch in the package, so we have to tie those exciting nuts, otherwise uh, maybe the beginner user not, will not even notice you saw those waves on the beginning. When I tie those exciting nuts, I get a great sharp engraving. In my case, I had a problem with that uh, USB cable. I was very confused why I couldn't get uh, finished uh, laser engravings. And actually, when I switched the cable to a new one, now it works correctly. From the software side, this CutLab X is quite weak and unfinished product. Very buggy. I mean, for example, we don't have the under function. It doesn't remember the last folder and similar. Laser GIBL is very limited. Of course, it's free software. Now, the Lightburn is very professional software, and I don't think that those professional users would buy th this kind of uh, engraver. I mean, this is something uh, for beginners, but I don't think they would like to add another, I don't know, 40 or $50 for the Lightburn. And uh, it is very pity that we couldn't use the camera with other softwares. Uh, I think I couldn't uh, connect the camera even over USB connection. I think it requires Wi-Fi connection, but for some reason I couldn't connect to my home Wi-Fi network. I'm not sure, maybe it's too far or maybe because of 5 gigahertz, uh, I'm not really sure. So connection over the USB cable and the camera usage uh, I'm very missing from the library. Basically the library can handle any USB camera uh, only from somehow maybe a separate USB cable or something like that. I'm not really sure, but uh, this should be solved. And in that case, uh, we could use that advantage of that camera positioning inside the engraver because it's a little bit hard to see through this glass. Sometimes it is not uh, visible that lasers, especially on this kind of black acrylic and uh, similar. So uh, this is my experience with the uh, Waylux K8 uh, laser engraver. As I mentioned, the idea is great, but from the software side, I think it requires some improvements too. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.